Okay, we're going to try something new this time. I'm going to hold the book up, but I'm going to read the book from the screen and see if this does any better. This story is called The Big Fish, and I've read this one to you before, too. So, let's see how this works. Once there was a poor fisherman. He had been fishing all day, but he hadn't caught a single thing. As the sun sank in the evening sky, he began to haul in his net one last time. To his surprise, it felt very heavy. He peered hopefully over the edge of the boat to see what he had caught. There, beneath the waves, a huge shadowy shape was struggling in the net. What a whopper, he cried. I'll have a feast tonight. Forgetting his tiredness, the fisherman grabbed hold of the ropes and started to pull. He tugged and heaved and heaved and tugged until sweat poured down his face, but he couldn't pull the net up. He paused for a moment and took a deep breath. And gathering all the strength in his skinny little body, he pulled and pulled with all his might. He pulled so hard that the little boat nearly capsized, but the net hardly seemed to move. The fisherman slumped to his knees and put his head in his hands. That one fish would be enough to feed everyone in my village for a whole month, he thought to himself. I can't just let it go. But he realized that no matter how hard he tried, he'll never be able to haul it in by himself. I got it, he thought fisherman suddenly. If I can just get the fish back to the shore, there'll be plenty of people to help me. He tied the net to the back of his boat and very slowly he began to row home. He hadn't gone from far when he be heard splashing behind him. Glancing back, he saw a flash of golden scales. The big fish was struggling in the net and churning up the water. Worried that he, his fine catch might escape, the fisherman tried to row faster. A little later, the fisherman thought he heard a voice. He stopped rowing and he listened. But all he could hear was the sound of the waves lapping against the boat. Yet as he, soon as he started to row, he thought he heard it again. All this excitement must be getting to me, muttered the fisherman. Then he heard it absolutely clearly, a rich silvery voice that sounded as though it came from another world. Please let me go, it said. The fisherman looked over his shoulder nervously, and his eyes almost popped. Whoa. Papa has messed with the zoom. Eyes almost popped out of his head. This was no fish, it was a monster. On top of its sleek, scaly body was the fearsome head of a dragon. With a squeal of fright, the fisherman threw himself down in the bottom of the boat and cowered there, trembling. Don't be afraid, said the creature softly. I won't hurt you. Lifting his head doubtfully, the fisherman met his eyes. I only want to be free, he said. The fisherman weighed up the situation. It was certainly more than he had bargained for, but this beast didn't sound nearly as scary as it looked, and he was extremely hungry. It is trapped in the net, he thought to himself. What harm could it do? Feeling a little braver, the fisherman began to row again. Soon the creature's voice rose above the lapping of the waves once more. Have a heart, it begged. I just want to go home. The fisherman sighed. Somehow he didn't think his dinner would taste quite the same any more. He leaned over the side of the boat, and he cut the net. Delighted to be free, the dragonfish hurled itself into the air, and its golden scales gleaming in the light of the setting sun. The fisherman gazed in awe as the majestic creature splashed into the sea.
When it rose to the surface again, the dragonfish bowed its head, great head solemnly. Thank you, my friend, it said. I am the son of the dragon king who rules the sea. I will not forget your kindness. The fisherman opened its mouth to speak, but before he could find any words, the creature had disappeared beneath the waves. There goes my feast, he sighed, and he began to row home. The fisherman was still feeling sorry for himself when he went fishing the next morning, but as he caught more and more fish, he began to cheer up. The morning after that, the fisherman's boat had hardly even left the shore before the net was full to bursting with fat, shiny fish. On the third morning, he hadn't even lowered his net in the water when a wet fish landed at his feet. What on earth, he exclaimed, as another fish slapped him in the face. It was incredible. The fish were leaping into the boat all by themselves. The fisherman stared into the water in disbelief, and from fathoms below, in another world, he heard a familiar voice. I haven't forgotten you, it said. From that day on, well, the fisherman never had any trouble catching fish. And whenever they, he heard fishermen boasting about the size of the fish they had caught, he would just smile to himself and say nothing.